top 10 Deadmau songs. I believe I said this before, but I'm just not the, the biggest EDM fan. It might be my least favorite genre together with rap. Or, yeah, you know, probably hardstyle, hardcore, all that fucking crap, but I don't think that's even music. You know, that was never really music to begin with, so, so there we go. Uh, but I still don't like the genre, but I do think, you know, that Deadmau5 and Daft Punk are kind of like the only two things I give a fuck about. Uh, the Chemical Brothers is pretty good. Uh, there was another guy, um, something with Fat, yeah, Fat Boy Slim, there we go. Um, I still have to check out, how's the one called again, that one... Um, that's a really weird band, but they're like the most acclaimed EDM band ever. But I forgot their name. Yeah, I forgot their name, but you probably know what I'm talking about though. I don't know anymore, but... There's some predictions. Uh, I really like Strobe. Um, that's Cascade song, I remember. Um, I really like Chords, I believe. Chords is a pretty good song, pretty progressive as well. That's probably why I like that mouse because he's kind of, you know, progressive house. Uh, yeah, progressive house, which is kind of, you know, as the word would imply, progressive. So I do, I, I do really like that when this stuff is really progressive and chill. Kind of changes it up as well. Because you have also techno, which is kind of the same shit over and over again, which I think is really boring. But you also have to have the rock and metal, so. You know, not like every genre that have, has its flaws in a way. Ghosts and stuff. I actually have Rob Swire, who is I believe the lead vocalist for Ghost and stuff. He actually said that the biggest influence or kind of his favorite band of all time is Pork Pantry. <laughs> which is which is kind of, you know, uh, that's kind of wild I think, you know, to go to have a techno act. I don't know if Rob Swire is techno, but to say that his favorite band is, you know, my favorite band as well, is kind of, you know, imp uh, unexpected in a way. Oh. Just wanted to throw it out there. The two of will said it once in one of his interviews. Of course I have to mention that guy in every video, but... That's my insane uh, love for that, for that guy. Really. Yeah, th this song is kind of nostalgic for me, The Veld. This kind of... I knew this song when it came out. When I was like 14 or something, 13, 14. Yeah, so there we go. And it's pretty good. Uh, I, I, I do wish that more people were like that mouse. You know, kind of... Um, he said once that he hated people, which is kind of uh, relatable. Um, but you know, he doesn't really give a fuck about um, critics or something like that. He just does his own thing. He's kind of progressive. He's chill. You know, if mo if only more EDM artists were like him, I would love the genre. But it's fucking terrible. But uh, but, but that mouse is pretty good. And Daft Punk, Chemical Brothers. Um, how's this one X called again? Fucking. Yeah, and actually I believe that the Chemical Brothers collaborated with Noel Gallagher once on one of their tracks, which is kind of the most unexpected thing ever. And actually Noel said that um, one of their songs, I believe, you know, with the collaboration with him, actually went to number one, which is the weirdest number one track ever. It was really weird, and I still don't know why it's number one. Pretty good bit. Number nine. 
I think this is a little bit too mainstream for me, this song. But it's still, still alright. The music video is gorgeous, though, I have to say. With the giant ass mouses fighting each other. Yeah. When when your music video is better than your song, that's that is kind of the song right here. Still a pretty good song though. And I'm right. I believe this is a single. Oh, the title is cool though. Our, our old synapse. It's a pretty cool title. It was kind of funny when he, uh, when the beat was going to drop, he kind of uh, went lower and lower with his head for some reason. This track was first like kind of us jumping out at the drop or something. Yeah, the kind of slamming beat, I do really like that. That much is progressive as fuck. I, I, I'm telling you that. Yeah, I'm probably gonna listen more to um, to that much techno in general. Really, it's pretty good. So nostalgic as fuck for me. Number seven, the belt. Um, I believe that um, a Phantom was kind of like, you know, what is the first song you really got into or kind of the first song that really got you into music. And I said bad because I couldn't really remind, of, uh, remind myself of anything. You know, Michael Jackson, but I think actually that this might be one of the first songs that actually got me into music and is actually a good song. So, sorry, Michael Jackson, but I think this is actually the first song. And based on the Ray Bradbury short story of the same name, this track was the first single from this album. I have no idea what the music video is about, though. Like this uh, boy, uh, like this girl and boy running together. I believe they're brother and sister or something. Never confirmed, I believe, but that boy is j um, pushing the girl over a fucking, um, you know, edge or something because he's evil. But then the girl survives, I believe, and then they're, you know, staying in the world. They're holding hands together at the end, and the door closes like they're locked in there forever. I have no idea what the music video is about. This creepy ass smile. Uh, it's, it's pretty relaxed. And then the door closes forever. Uh, I remember. Yeah, the, uh, this is probably my least favorite music video though, but I love the song. This track combines a nocturnal vibe with female vocals. But they're, they're just talking with a with a record deal or something. With a producer. Alongside a music video showing Dead Mouse playing an illegal rave party in Manchester, this track was also the first for both artists to chart in the UK's top 40 
only for. Ah, uh, there's a some chord. There we go. This might be my favorite Deadmau5 song. This song is incredible. I just love the build up, the, the kind of electronic opening, the drop is amazing. This song is great. The entire 4x4 four four record is great, I think. I mean, really, you can request some that mouse to me, and I actually wouldn't mind it, really. Uh, Brazil, second edit. Brazil, second edit. Yeah, I, I believe that a lot of fucking shitty artists have covered this tune, but you know, you can be the original. I, I'm not even sure if this is the original, but I believe it came from that mouse. Yeah, there we go. Shitty artist. Artist. And you have that one bitch as well that kind of leached off of this song and never appeared again. I'm not sure how the bitch is called again, but fuck her. It's called leeching off of an actual decent artist. Uh, raise your weapon. Number three, raise your weapon. This is the only dubstep song I fucking ever will like. Just the dubstep remix or the, the dubstep kind of uh, build up the drop is good because it fuses electronic elements together with a really catchy beat. And uh, Greta Swabobetch's vocals are pretty good over it as well. Cause this is the only dubstep song I will ever fucking like. And the piano is nice at the beginning. What starts off as a progressive house track with dark piano chords and vocals from Greta Swabobetch ends in a full. Yeah, because she still have those really great elements, the piano <coughs> and the vocals from a uh, Greta or something. Um. And the dubstep doesn't really destroy that, it just only changes up the, the beat a little bit. But it's it's kind of good, you know, it doesn't overstay his welcome because he uses it a little bit on this track. He uses it like a little bit of a kind of drop beat or something. He doesn't blow your ears out with dubstep garbage. He just uses it a little bit to kind of use it as a uh, climax, like a drop or something. Which is the way it should have been. This is how you should have used dubstep in music, but of course people don't understand that and just, you know, blow your fucking ears out because teenagers are retarded as fuck. But this is what it should have been. I believe that must have once that he hated dubstep. He still has it on one of his tracks. Kind of ironic. It's like it's slightly used, you know. It's not that bad. It's bad when you overuse it. Ghosts and stuff. Number two, ghosts and stuff. With Rob Schwire, for lack of a better name. I mean, that is always one thing I kind of disliked about that mouse is album titles are so fucking lazy. Random album title, album title goes here, insert album title. It's so fucking dumb. 4 times 4 equals 12 or something. I know it's 16, but that is the title. Again, the 
the video is almost as memorable as the song, with Dead Mouse playing someone who dies after being rushed to the hospital and becomes a ghost. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few additional tracks for the honorable mention. Uh, telling is what the fuck. Uh, Telemis Communications with Imogen Heap on Tal Gazir. I mean, it's net, the names, man. The video is really weird, though. Kind of looks three, well, not 3D, like 2D animation or something. There might be coffee from Al Tal Gazir. I do like it, though, but <coughs> he really needs to work on his Al Tal's fucking up. Uh, CF featuring Colleen Di Agostino, while one uh, is less than two. What? Yeah, that's true though. <coughs> Foxing Berlin uh, uh, from Random Album Title. I fucking love this song. If more, if more tech, or if more techno was like this and mainstream like that, mouse, then I would have loved the genre. Write the second from four times four equals twelve, <coughs> which is kind of his best record, really. <coughs> uh, Strobe, yeah, it's kind of his best song, really. Number one, Strobe. I mean, it's fucking ten minutes, man. It's an epic. An epic progressive out tune. Gotta this love it. Is ten and a half minutes long, with yeah, there we go. Building from the first moment on, and the emotional high one gets once the beat finally pops <coughs> is undeniable. <coughs> it starts off slowly with just synths, strings, and other effects before picking up speed and reaching a climax at the six minute and forty eight second mark. My fans are probably going to be really divided about this list. Probably everyone is going to hate it except for me. Oh, it's EDM, it sucks. I mean, give it a chance, guys, it's pretty good. I just want to discover more artists like this. It's actually called EDM a good thing. Um, yeah, be because I really want to like it though, but it's just like there's so many shitty EDM artists out there. And that much is not one of them, but it's really rare to find, you know, like a Daft Punk or a Chemical Brothers in this day and age, which is really rare. You know, that, that much was kind of like the last quality EDM artist out there, really. Uh, yeah, I do want to find something like him again. But I think it's gonna be really impossible though to find someone like that. You know, in the uh, like underground, when I'm talking like mainstream, who's actually good. So I probably, uh, so I mostly avoid the genre because it's pretty shit. Uh, but I do like that much. That that much pretty good. Um, so let me know what you think about that much. I do really like the artist in question. Uh, so there we go. But I, I of course prefer heavy metal and rock. Um, so let me know what you think about them. I've been ominous. God bless, safe, take care. Like this video, subscribe to the to the channel. Ominous more videos like this one. Hope you've enjoyed it and peace.